Hi, welcome back to another Terrence Scapes video. Uh, this video is continuing in the uh, Desert Board series that I've been uh, shooting over the last several days. Uh, this is a, another segment of the large Desert Board set. <coughs> Excuse me. And there is a video showcasing the entire board set laid out on a table um, a ways back in the uh, video queue. So I encourage you to go back there and check that out if you have not yet seen that video. Uh, so today I wanted to show you the uh, sort of water feature boards that are not rivers. Uh, so um, there's um, a couple ponds that were included in this uh, set, a, a swamp board, and a dried uh, cracked earth, you know, dried mud board as well. So I'd like to uh, give you a chance to take a look at each of these, each of these uh, up close, and we can talk about some of the design intentions for them and how they came out. So here you can see the dried pond, cracked earth, dried mud board. Um, I think officially it's called dried mud board. And uh, gives you a sense of the sort of scope of the patches of cracked earth that I'm putting down currently. Um, in fact, for this, what I tried to do was drop the height here. I'll show you that a little bit more, but uh, drop this and make it a bit of a valley to give the sense that these are, you know, sort of more connected, but I really didn't lower it, I think, quite enough. So that might be something I explore a little bit in the future, like, you know, that these were a one larger body of water and then, you know, the land sloped here and it kind of pooled into these areas. Anyway, something I might look at in the future. Um, but it gives you a sense also of the density of the uh, reeds that I put in. So I decided to carry these uh, onto the water feature boards as well, at least some of them. This is not a water feature board, but was at some time. So that's kind of why I'm grouping it with the other boards here in this video. Uh, so I really wanted to throw some in partly because it's a it's a sort of a, a void on the board. So by placing in some reeds, it helps define its parameters, not parameters, its uh, perimeter. Uh, so that, you know, when you're looking at this board on the table, you know that there's something here to draw your eye to. Uh, and uh, we'll take a closer look at the cracked earth and you can see that in detail. So for those of you who are new uh, to this uh, effect that I've been doing on some boards, um, this was made with Chroma Crackle. It's a crackle paste, uh, sort of like a crackle gel, and you apply it as a sort of heavy liquid, and then when it dries, it cracks in a very organic way. Uh, I was heard a description of that on one of their uh, videos, and I said, organic? Oh, I like that. So, in any case, um, it really changes in the amount of cracking based on its thickness that it's applied. Now, here you can see um, that this uh, area has very little cracking and this actually has a bit of a slope coming down into these deeper areas. And I, I intended that actually as it gives it a little bit more of a natural feel. Um, but it was interesting to see just how small the crackle effect was in these shallow areas where it sort of sloped down. And here you can see the other one uh, a little bit closer. And this one really captures that variation even a little bit more strongly. So here it was quite deep. And you can see there were um, some pits uh, from when I carved the board. And actually I've been deciding to leave these in as it really produces some kind of unique uh, and very large cracking effect near it as this is the sort of thickest layer of the chroma crackle. And then as it gets away from that and starts to come up the slope, you can see it's got a very fine cracking effect. Uh, so anyway, um, I really uh, like this product, the Chroma Crackle, and I think it produces a really nice effect. And in fact, on the next two boards, um, you'll see how I've combined it with some water in the areas as well to um, capture the thought of you know, areas in retreat as they dry or have been refilled. So let's take a look at those. So this is one of the ponds that I developed for this set. The customer ordered pond, ordered pond boards and thinking about how to integrate them a little bit better, a little bit more believably into the desert set, I suggested to have it with a, a very drying edge uh, so that it's sort of, you know, in retreat, drying out, um, that sort of idea at least. Uh, and, uh, you know, looking at it, um, what I did is I... Uh, carved it, uh, you know, I carved the pond just a hair deeper in the middle than the outer areas. And what I did is I tinted the uh, water, quote water, it's um, a clear coat, it's a two-part 
epoxy resin, very similar to Envirotex. There are several products out there. Uh, in any case, so that when I filled this, I really wanted this to be opaque, uh, partly because if you could see through it, it really breaks the illusion that this is actually a deeper lake. And, um, but if tinted properly in the thin profiles it gets quite shallow and you can really um, see sort of through the water and get a little sense of that. Um, it's uh, in hindsight I, I probably could have made the transition a little smoother between these two points but uh, I am restricted a little bit on the overall board um, so maybe I could push this a little wider in the future but I was overall reasonably pleased with that transition effect uh, and uh, you know it of course you know me I'm always looking to the future and, and future iterations but um, one thing uh, to mention is I felt like I wanted them to stand apart a little bit from the other water features for no particular reason other than I thought it'd be interesting to have some variation so you can see I've left off the reeds around this uh, but you know if the customer would like me to put reeds in around this that would be a, a very quick fix and very easy to do but I again I was just looking for some uh, variety in it so let's take a closer look at the water and you can see that transition effect so you can see um, around the edge of the pond, you know, I applied the chroma crackle. Now, actually, this is also one of the reasons why the transition is so abrupt. If I had had a smoother transition down into the water, all of the chroma crackle would flow down into that, leaving a very, very thin edge at the top because it's actually self-leveling. So in order for me to try to retain a visibly large cracking effect, you know, underneath this water, I had to sort of drop this at an edge and then apply the chroma crackle right to the edge and enough that it wouldn't, you know, sort of start to flow over it. So that is part of why this effect looks a little bit sharper. I really, like right in here, I really wanted to see that kind of an effect come out. So it's a bit of a compromise, um, but, but I, I like that. So <laughs> that was the goal. Um, now, uh, taking a look at the, I'll well, give you a little pan around the edges just for a second here, so you can see that fine crackling in the shallow shores, and then the deeper crackle as it's under the water. And actually, I saw a video, um, a picture of a river in the desert that was, I guess, refilling, and it had very large cracking underneath the water. Uh, so it made me feel a little bit better about having cracks under the water as, you know, perhaps a recent rainstorm has refilled this partially. Looking at the surface of the water, however, um, I tried something different and I ended up trying to fix it actually. Um, I tend to use a uh, Liquitex uh, heavy gloss gel. It's got a lot of stiff body to it and I tried to apply it as thin as I could to make the smallest waves possible with it. Um, I wanted to use it on this surface primarily because it's much more wide open and so it's more likely to receive you know models or or whatever um, and that could sometimes leave an impression in the Mod Podge depending on the weight of the object and how long it rests there. But once that dried I really didn't like the effect and in fact somebody who was looking at the board commented on it and said mm, I don't know. So in order to, to sort of fix that I went back over it with a thin coating of Mod Podge and that actually smoothed it out quite a bit. It took the sharp creases off of the uh, waves and uh, gave a little bit of texture in between them and I think it looks a lot better um, than it did previously. So. Um, you know, that's uh, you know, a tip for other people is, uh, you know, you can always apply more and more layers until you get the effect that you're looking for. Um, of course, with acrylic mediums like this, however, if you do get too thick, um, you're going to get um, uh, it, not hazing, uh, not frosting. Um, it starts to get um, milky. That's, that's a better word for it, um, especially in high humidity conditions. Now, the nice thing is that these are two extremely thin coats, so they're going to retain their clarity under almost all conditions quite well, and they um, actually cleared up nice and quick when I applied them. So anyway, that gives you a sense of how the water came out, as well as the shoreline, and of course, scattered around it are some of the, you know, vegetation that you see on the other desert boards, including my little sagebrush, tumbleweeds, whatever, and uh, of course, you know, lots and lots of Silflor buffalo grass. 
And here you see the last of the water feature boards, not, not including the rivers, of course. And this one I was most pleased with and uh, really felt like it came out a lot better than I expected. This is a swamp board. Uh, now, typically, when I do swamp boards for you know the sort of verdant, lush greenscape, um, you know I'll have little islands cut into you know a large expanse of water. Now, because this was to be adapted to a desert board, I really felt unsure about how best to represent that. So what I decided to do was carve in sort of the shape that I would normally do for a swamp um, and then uh, basically, uh, you know, fill in these uh, shallow areas with chroma crackle to give it like the drying effect. And then, much like the ponds, cut in a deeper section so there's still a little bit of a drop off. But if I had filled it, um, you know, the chroma crackle would all pour into it. And then uh, fill it, you know, in the same way that I did with the ponds with this sort of murky green algae dirty water. And uh, that way, you know, as the water pooled into the center of these areas, it gave a very nice irregular shape as the water is sort of receding. Um, and I just really loved its overall feel. Now for this, um, because I tend to really heavily vegetate around um, swamps, I decided to go in quite heavily with the reeds. This, uh, this is a sisal material, sisal fibers and uh, really um, tried to put in quite a few to give it the impression that when this is full, you know, there's quite a bit of them growing around it. Uh, but since it's drying out, you know, they're, they're brown and dead, that sort of idea. Um, and I did put in a little bit more vegetation around this um, because it's, you know, closer to the water, that sort of idea. But I really uh, didn't put much in the actual swamp, you know, areas itself. Um, for no particular reason other than I didn't feel like it needed it. Um, I felt like it had enough visual interest as it was, and I'm more interested in getting some of these pieces out a way to fill out the boards a little bit so that when you're putting it up against another board, right, we have a little bit of a visual interest in, in an otherwise open area. Uh, that, that's the idea. So let's take a closer look at the swamp and I can show you how that effect came out. So here you can see um, that effect, you know, very similar to the pond, but here, you know, extremely shallow water uh, in through this area. And, you know, that crackle effect just comes through really nicely with that very light hint of green. Now, I will say that getting this water into this piece was much more of a challenge uh, than some of the other boards, as I really... One of the things with these kinds of two-part resins is that if you're not careful, it's going to form a little bit of a, a rounded edge through surface tension basically. So I had to continuously work it out um, and it's sort of self-leveling so sometimes it would then all of a sudden start to have that sort of convex shape. So I had to keep spreading it, keep spreading it, keep touching it up the whole time uh, until the uh, resin was almost really set up. I was feeling a little nervous I wasn't going to get it fixed the way I wanted to um, before it sets and uh, if you know anything about these resins they're very slow setting so that gives you an idea of how long I I played with these. <laughs> um, and here I had a little thin area in between them and uh, you know had just the, just the smallest amount of water still filling that that sort of shallow area. I kind of was um, hoping to bring that into you know this uh, piece and then uh, of course again that just that really nice uh, crackle effect you know really nice. So um, you know the idea being that there were deeper spots within the swamp, shallower areas, the shallower areas dried up fastest, um, you get Get the uh, crackle at the edges, um, a nice amount of reeds, and uh, that's the effect I was going for. So uh, that's a closer look at the uh, desert modified swamp board, something I've never done before. So that gives you a little look at um, exactly how I went about trying to uh, develop these pieces to adapt them to a desert scene. Uh, you know, I hadn't really tried to adapt them quite so in with such intention, I should say, in the past. So it was a really nice challenge and gave me a chance to sort of, you know, push these into a different direction um, and gives me, you know, some uh, inspiration that I can, uh, you know, adapt these to other scenes potentially down the road, uh, particularly the swamp board. Little unusual, but really liked how it came out. 
Uh, eventually, eventually, I'll have photos of these up on the website, uh, terrencegapes.com. Uh, there are a lot of photos for all of these different pieces that I need to get up on the uh, site, so it might take me a few days um, or a little longer maybe to get them all up and linked from all of the descriptions and all of the videos. So, uh, uh, but of course, if you're looking at this video in the future, in the future, um, then all of that will already be done. Uh, so um, if you have any questions or comments on uh, any of these things, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. Um, I always uh, appreciate the feedback that I get from the community. And uh, I have one more video to shoot in this series. So uh, hopefully you'll come back and uh, visit my, my video series uh, one more time to see the completion of this Desert Terrain Board set.